are indeed live and we have arrived and SummerSlam was just a few hours ago and there is a lot to talk about, there's a lot to break down and we're going to figure out what the fuck just happened and I don't mean that in a bad way, we're going to talk about everything, everything that happened because coming into it I wasn't too excited for the show but I want to say a week before I was kind of geared up and ready to watch it and excited so I made my plans I got to see it and I want to talk about everything that kind of struck a chord with me so I'm gonna to need to remember the card off the top of my head because I am old and senile and I need to take Genko to get my memory going so uh, Janine summer slam lineup please here we go summer slam lineup there we go right Stark has Jarvis, I have Janine. So, looking at the lineup, the first match that we saw was Randy Orton versus Sheamus, and I'll be really honest with you, I can kind of give or take a Sheamus and Randy Orton match at this point in my uh, wrestling fandom. They've wrestled so many times. Uh, Sheamus won, and he needs to win, being a money in the bank contract holder. I am of the notion that a contender needs to be a contender and when you have someone that has the money in the bank contract they need to have it for a reason and they can't be just losing and taking arm drags every other second so i was happy in that sense that sheamus won not very much into sheamus right now to be honest with you uh, i wouldn't be surprised if if brian does come back sheamus goes to cash in and brian costs him the uh cash in i think that that's probably going to happen uh, let's just hope that Brian doesn't come back around the same time as the Royal Rumble because we're going to have another situation on our hands. And I've warned you, i warned you right now, months in advance. Then we go to the tag match. That was awesome. That multi-person tag match was so funny. Uh, I had a lot of fun watching that. You know what? New Day at first were very interesting. They looked like they were going to do like a race gimmick and they were going to talk about things like that then they kind of strayed away from that and they went for more of a like a almost gospel gimmick then people didn't really like it at first but they have put a lot of their heart and energy and create creativity into it and they have really 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 done well with this they're very entertaining i loved their uh new york new day rendition that needs to be a christmas number one sell that on itunes do whatever you have to do Biggie's little dancing was pretty funny. Uh, Xavier Woods ringside sermons. That's what I'm going to call them from now on. Actually, fuck it. That's my idea. That's what I'm going to call these ringside sermons. But his constant yabba 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 is awesome. I liked it especially in particular when you had Big E Langston in there with uh, one of the Lucha Dragons and he yelled, This ain't David vs. Goliath. This is Biggie vs. Mexican or something like that. Then when, oh god, who was it? Oh god, um. Titus O'Neil's partner, Darren Young, was on the floor. You just hate to see that happen to a nice guy like Darren Young, but he pees like that sometimes. I cannot stop laughing. Very entertaining. So happy that the New Day won. I kind of feel like they should never have lost the first time. So quite happy that they got the belts back. Kofi's celebration on the ground, kicking his legs up like a child over and over and over again and Biggie doing that little dance was just awesome that was a lot of fun I could not stop smirking and cracking up about that very glad to see those guys come out on top and I really really hope also that they can get some more tag teams in for the WWE the future reference I know that they're doing a Divas Revolution I think it's about time we have a tag team revolution and they start looking at bringing in some new teams as well as creating some new teams maybe give the Young Bucks a phone call maybe give uh, the Killer Elite Squad a call maybe give the Briscoes a call if they can behave themselves but they've got to start thinking about that and planning that then we go on to the match that I was actually looking forward to the most and it's going to surprise a lot of people but yes I was really looking forward to the Arrow Stephen Emil teaming with Neville versus Wade Barrett and Stardust and I was very excited for, for a number of reasons if you haven't realized already and if you look right behind me that is a DC Comics poster I'm a huge comics person big fan of Green Arrow in the comics as you can see just underneath here I've got some Green Arrow comics so I was very very 
excited to see Stephen Emil, uh, who's a wrestling fan like us, go in there and do something with the WWE. Uh, and I will say this, it really got on my nerves weeks before with all these people, and this is hilarious to me, coming from wrestling fans, and yes, now I'm going to cut a promo or a ringside sermon on these people. Oh, he's a celebrity coming into wrestling. Oh, 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 this person's not going up the cup. Oh no, it's awful. Oh no. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Seriously, every one of you shut your mouths, all right? This is professional wrestling. Celebrities come in all the time. All right. This isn't like Jeremy Piven getting the name of the card wrong. SummerSlam, by the way, not Summerfest. Still ain't forgiving him for that. Uh, uh, or Bradley Cooper, or guys that come on that acted completely uninterested and completely just made it look worse. Uh, this is someone who actually is a fan, that took it seriously, that did his training, that got invested and did very, very well out of that. And it was a bit of additional publicity for the card. And it was a, an additional reason, a bit more meat on the undercard for me to want to watch SummerSlam. And I also do know that there were quite a few people that watched that on just to see that match in particular. And you know what's really good about that? Some of those people are going to see Adrian Neville for the very, very first time. And Adrian Neville does what he does, puts on a show, puts on an absolute show in front of people who've probably never seen him before guess what now they're adrian neville fans so to all you people that whine oh it's not one of us coming over blah, 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 but then want to go oh well the mma audience need to be more accepting of us and cm punk coming over or they need to be more accepting when dave batista is doing hollywood films just remember just remember that you've said all of that and then when it comes on the other way around you start whining all of you can shut your mouths uh, as far as the match goes, Emil looked decent for a guy that doesn't have much, barely any wrestling training. Good athlete, looked very, very good out there. Gave us a hip toss, a leapfrog, a kick up, uh, and a, a nice dive off the top of the rope. I felt his selling was actually pretty good for um, someone that's never wrestled. That was quite impressive. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him do something again in the future, maybe at a WrestleMania or maybe at another card, but it was awesome seeing him. He even came out with the, the Arrow hoodie himself, and um, it was a lot of fun. I had a big, big smile on my face watching that. That was a lot of fun. Right, we saw a John Stewart, Paul Heyman thing uh, backstage. John Stewart... Uh, another guy that does very, very well when he crosses over, takes it seriously, does it very well, invests himself, you know, he, he, he credits him. I would love to see him and Paul Heyman go at it. Hold that thought because we're going to come back to that much, much later. Ryback versus Miz versus Big Show, I'll be really honest, I didn't really have much interest in. Big Show kind of is at the tail end of his career to me and it's a lot harder to get into what he's doing nowadays. Uh, but it was good to kind of see Ryback come out with a win that was cool uh, Ambrose Reigns versus the Wyatts that kind of just came off like a standard tag match on uh, uh, Raw for me to be honest with you uh, there's a lot to say about Roman Reigns right now and I think that that needs to be stored away over here for now maybe come back to it later in the week about where they've been going with him because if this is supposed to be your next big star there's things that you do with somebody like that. And I personally feel, and I'll say this very quickly, that Roman Reigns needs to be feuding with Triple H of all people. There was hints of that happening, but it's never been paid off. And I think that they need to revisit that at some point within the next maybe six to seven months, because I think that's going to be the thing that brings him up even more and brings him up even more. So as far as that match, it was kind of here and there for me. Ambrose is another one that's kind of lost in the shuffle. As far as I'm concerned, the magic with Bray Wyatt has gone. He was a great character. He's a decent performer. But when he keeps... Do you know what? I'm just going to say this. There needs to be a plan when you have a character like that. And to me, when he's losing all the time and doesn't care about wins and all of that crap, the credibility of the character starts to kind of diminish. And that's kind of what I feel has happened with him at the moment. They can reheat him, but it feels like He's only been on TV for, what, two years? And they've had to keep reheating him and reheating him and reheating him and reheating him. And it's like when you keep reheating a lasagna over and over again, you get fed up and going, oh, fuck it, I'll just order a pizza. And that's kind of how I feel with Bray Wyatt at this point. 
uh, what else was there to talk about? Now, John Cena and Seth Rollins. Seth came out in white. He, do you know what? He was like the spirit of Shawn Michaels when he came out. And Seth seemed to really have a point to prove when he came out. He was literally pulling out all the stops. Moves left and right, everything but the kitchen sink. He did Buff Bagwell's uh, old finishing move, if you remember the Buff Blockbuster, he flipped off the rope and caught the neck. Not Hurricane's move, by the way, it was Buff Bagwell's move, just let's get that straight. Uh, standing shooting star presses, reversals, he was not stopping moving. There was a, even a moment where he uh, did a dive outside the ring, got back up, did another dive outside the ring, got back up, ran back in, done a flip over the rope. Seth just kept on going and going and going and going and going and going. And I'll say this, if he ever turns babyface, he'll probably be very, very successful because he's got a lot of crowd-pleasing maneuvers that he can use that could really get the fans behind him. He even pulled out a frog splash, which looked really, really cool. Him and Cena really, really went for it and kept going and kept going and really just, they went at it. And credit to Cena because he's been doing this a lot, especially this year. He's like turned it up another level and it's been really, really great to see from John Cena. Um, and then what happened? They're both down. There was a ref bump. John Stewart came out, got the chair. We all think he's going to hit Seth Rollins, although it started to look a little bit telegraphed that he was going to hit Cena because the way he was kind of moving. He kind of looks at Seth, then he goes back, then he kind of looks at Seth, then he goes back towards John, and then he kind of he hits John in the stomach. He almost ran out with the chair, which was quite funny. If anybody noticed, then he oh shit, and then he can put it back down, and the floor got some pedigree on it. Runs out. Seth wins. Seth has both the belts. Um, I think that's probably the most credible victory you can give a heel that has been presented in the way that Seth Rollins has been. Although, really, the most credible win you can give him is perhaps him winning one, two, three cleanly. But because it looks like we're going to get a rematch of that and something else, which we'll touch on later, that perhaps that was the best way to go. Now, I think that one thing that they could do is that. If John Stewart's going to be a regular fixture on the show for a few months, maybe have John Stewart as Seth Rollins' mouthpiece. Because the one knock that a lot of people have on Seth, as well as being booked as a weak champion, is the fact that when they put him in these long talking segments, he doesn't do too well up past the five minute mark. He kind of struggles. So perhaps with a natural speaker, the caliber of a John Stewart, Maybe that that will work and if Seth can play off of him a bit more it can kind of help him uh, in the long run Maybe even do a uh, Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar rematch with Stuart and Heyman on The corners of both men and you can have some very interesting verbal exchanges and also some Crossover appeal from John Stewart's time uh, on television elsewhere. Then we go to the Divas match I felt bad for the Divas, and this is why some people might call this stuff lip service, because they had to follow up the events of that match. That really could have been a good opener, in my opinion, and they could have had Orton and Sheamus in that spot, because people didn't really care too much for Orton and Sheamus, and maybe if they wanted to get the crowd warmed up, given the energy and enthusiasm and the point that they want to prove with the Divas, maybe them warming the crowd up and kind of taking advantage of that first response to the first thing they see would have been a better idea for them. The crowd was a little bit burnt out. They booed the Bellas whenever they were in the ring. They seemed to be very into Sasha, and I don't blame them, especially after last night's performance, the night before that on NXT. I mean... Just a quick side note, probably one of the best matches of WWE's calendar year this year. Probably their best match. Her and Bailey, I mean, tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. I mean, that's fantastic. And it does make me excited to see what they could do with them in the future. Um, Paige's team won. Paige, Charlotte and Becky Lynch won. I was happy to see that. Um... I think that Bella is probably Nikki is going to hold that belt for a little bit longer because they want to get the bad taste of AJ Lee out of their mouths, and um, that was that. Then we had Cesaro and Kevin Owens. Uh, I thought that they started to get very spirited and started to get warmed up. Cesaro is getting more and more popular by the second. I saw the Cesaro section. There was a lot of positive reactions to the stuff that he was doing. Again. 
Owens was the guy that won and it was good for Owens to win. I think Owens' momentum has stalled a little bit really since the John Cena feud and then of course there's much that has been made about their weight remarks and the weight comments that they openly made on TV with Randy Orton which a lot of people think was not a good thing to draw attention to. Um, Seth Kevin Owens wins. I don't think the feud is over. I wonder what they'll do with Owens next. I personally feel that Owens should feud with Randy Orton next. I think that would be a very good person for him to go in there with uh, to kind of get that momentum back and keep it going. Uh, Cesaro, I don't know what's next for him, but I hope there is a plan for Cesaro because as we've all said, Cesaro is perhaps one of the best people, one of the best people that's kind of the most underutilized within the company. Then we go to the main event, and the main event, right, oh my god, where do I begin with this? So, Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. This is the big rematch from last year's WrestleMania. This is the, uh, you know, the controversial rematch from last year's WrestleMania, which is very controversial because, of course, if everybody recalls, we saw Undertaker lose for the very first time against anybody especially against Brock Lesnar at Wrestlemania and it was probably the most shocking event in wrestling really in the WWE of that year probably the most memorable outcome of a matchup in the last five years and probably one of the most talked about Wrestlemania moments in probably Wrestlemania's history at the moment right now people still talk about that and people were shocked by that and obviously the match itself was quite lackluster lots of people wondered what that was what was behind that was it Taker's injuries was it the fact that he got a concussion he came back for a match against Bray Wyatt and while he looked all right it wasn't really mind-blowing however with this match the one thing I can say is that they seem to redeem themselves uh, Taker looked in much better shape he you know wasn't concussed this time he was going for all the bumps he was taking the suplexes he was going for it himself i do think there's still a lot of smoke and mirrors with him to kind of cover up some of the limitations he's got athletically speaking and i think that that's what you need to do with him we've seen a more villainous more heelish undertaker these days he was doing low blows he was doing some heelish like tactics in the brawls so that kind of was explained as him going for desperate measures now because it's desperate times for him. Um, it was a very, very entertaining match. And in that sense, you could say it was a step up significantly from what we got last year. However, we need to talk about the ending because the ending has got a lot of people divided. A lot of people are talking about it. But actually, it's not really divided. I've come across a lot of people who really did not like the ending and were very confused by it. So for those of you who saw this, Taker is in the arm bar on the ground. Lesnar's got him in the arm bar. Taker's got top position. Lesnar's shoulder is up. One of his shoulders is down. You can't really tell. Then it looks like his shoulders are down. And then Charles Robinson starts to do the count, one, he counts one, then the bell rings after one, because we can see it at the camera angle that we saw it as, as on TV, but Taker <laughs> tapped out, the referee Charles Robinson goes, what are you doing? I didn't, I didn't, no, 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 da, 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 da. Lesnar's kind of standing there like, what, what's going on? Charles Robinson's telling the timekeeper, no, 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 you've got to restart the match. But he hasn't actually officially restarted the match just yet. Undertaker low blows Brock Lesnar. He puts him in the Hell's Gate submission. Lesnar gives him the finger, much like I wanted to at that point. Lesnar doesn't tap out, he passes out. Undertaker has declared the winner. Lots of fans were kind of confused by it and some people felt very deflated by the ending and that was it, that was it. I think Heyman had the same reaction that I had, banging the, the time cube and then he's telling people that no, Undertaker tapped out and this isn't like a heelish thing where you know the heel manager's like that was an illegal maneuver taker really did tap out uh because then lawler confirms it and so do the other commentators confirm it then when they show you the other camera angle you do indeed see undertaker <laughs> tapping out and that just reminds me of something because if the referee was able to see what happened in the lana 
in the uh, Ziggler and Rusev match with Lana and Summer Rae, then surely he would have been able to have seen what happened there. Uh, from a storyline standpoint, I think that the reason they did this is clearly because they want to do a rematch with these two and they want to keep this feud going and that's fine. Uh, I think the idea for this came from a match with Undertaker a few years back when he wrestled Kurt Angle and if you remember years ago, maybe about 10, 11, 12 years ago, they did a match with Undertaker and Kurt Angle, Taker put him in a... Um, went to do the powerbomb or whatever it was and Angle reversed it into a submission they were both down and Undertaker tapped at the same time Angle got his shoulder up for the count and it was a confusing ending and I think in X theory that's what they wanted to go for in real life the closest thing this reminded me of was when Victor Ortiz fought Floyd Mayweather of course there's no grappling in boxing but you know in the sense that there was something controversial that happened and what they needed to do is the referee needed to put them apart, restart the match and then go from there. And I think in the storyline they'll probably have to point that out, that that's what should have happened. And in a sense that could be argued within the context of the storyline, not real life, bad officiating. And maybe they needed to sort that out. Uh, what do I think of the finish myself? Personally, it was very confusing quite head scratching because of the way the camera angle was shot it was a bit deflating in some senses i kind of do feel that a lot of people were taken out after that point uh, i know that they need to get undertaker you know keep the undertaker steam train rolling i personally think that this new character trait of the undertaker is being done specifically because i feel that they're going to set up an undertaker versus sting match and they need to kind of do these things with The Undertaker and then Sting being the law of, of it all comes back and pretty much calls them out on it and I think that if that's why they did what they did then that's quite a good idea for Sting to come back and then to say what happened to you you used to fight with Honor and you used to fight like this and now look what you're resorted to and that would be quite an interesting way to go with it with Sting perhaps that's what they're going to do but as far as a finish that did kind of take it out of me a little bit but not too much and i do think they can come back from it and they do have a ways to come back from it and they can do a rematch i know as the day goes by i'm going to have more thoughts on this so if you want to know what they are follow me on twitter at buff bin stuff and i'll let you know what else i think if you want to ask me anything follow me at buff bin stuff and if you want to ask me stuff tweet me i'll reply as quickly as possible um, overall I thought it was a very fun show I had a lot of fun watching it this was not a show I was expecting to be particularly great and it was and I think one of the aims that you want with a wrestling show is that you want people to be talking about what happened and in many ways they achieved that with a male uh, diving off the top ropes with the uh, Cena and Rollins match and the turn of Jon Stewart and even the ending of The Undertaker and Lesnar match as confusing as it was we're all talking about it. So on that level, it was very successful. I'm going to stop because I'm completely dried out. You now let me know what you think because these are the only things that matter now is hearing from you. So you tell me what you felt. You tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. How did you feel about that Undertaker and Lesnar match? That ending? How did you feel about Rollins winning against Cena? Was there something you really disliked? Let me know. Let me know how you feel. If you haven't already, hit the like button. If you haven't already, write down below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because my ego demands it. Take care, love you all, and peace.